Shalom. I want to start off by giving all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Manatazak with GMS Ancient of Days in Los Angeles, currently teaching with the small sanctuary in Inglewood. And today, through the Spirit, I want to get into a lesson that is basically called Things Are Ramping Up Prophetically. Okay, now I, I name this lesson that specifically because as you can see with everything that's going on, okay, the scriptures are speaking and jumping off of the page. And this is why it's very important that you understand prophecy. Okay, now I added in the beginning of this lesson the definition of prophetically. Okay, and the things and the words that we are speaking are the things that have already been said and foretold before times. We are bringing it out through the spirit and they are taking place as we speak. Okay. That's why it's important to understand this word and to bring it out exactly as it is written. Okay. Because this isn't our program at the end of the day. Okay. We men of the hopeful elect are speaking these words in truth and sincerity. Okay. Because these, we believe these are the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. And when I say we, I'm speaking about the Israelites according to the scriptures. Okay who are you so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans. Okay, and of course, the speckled bird uh, uh, mingled amongst the other nations, okay, because we have been scattered pursuant to the curses. Okay, so it stands to reason that in these last days, there's going to be Israelites coming back into the fold of the elect that are going to look like these other nations and speak the languages of these uh, uh, nations and countries where they come from. But the spirit within them bears witness with the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai that they too are Israelites. Okay, we here at Great Millstone teach about this great awakening that's taking place being a spiritual awakening. Okay, now, uh, without further ado, we're going to begin in the book of Revelations, uh, chapter 19. And the headline in Revelations 19 reads, The heavenly host praise the Most High Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay, so if the heavenly host praise you, how much more so us that are in these mortal bodies, in this sinful flesh? Okay, all creation should be praising you, but only a small remnant is doing that in truth and sincerity. Actually calling upon the true names, trusting and believing on the true names. Okay, which we believe, pursuing the faith, are Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Okay, this is Revelations uh, chapter 19 verse 10 okay and this is a, an account of John the Revelator when he was on the island of Patmos receiving uh, the revelations of, of, of uh, the things that are going to happen in the end times the times that we are currently living in now this is Revelation 19 and 10 and it reads and I fell at his feet to worship him okay that I being John the Revelator okay and uh, his feet being uh, one of these heavenly hosts uh, an actual angel so like, and it says, and he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. So the angel saying, hey, hey, don't do that. Hey, get up. Don't bow to me. Okay. He's like, he's a fellow servant. He is our brethren. Okay. Because we in this sinful flesh who are doing this work in truth and sincerity are angels uh, uh, in, in, in these uh, cages of darkness, so to speak. Okay, we have just been sent to perform a specific mission. Okay, you have angels on the right hand side, you have angels on the left hand side, and you have angels that are on the earth. Okay, that that are fulfilling the uh, uh, the, the prophecies that are written here and in the scriptures. Okay, some to honor, some to dishonor. Okay, but here's the point: it says, "I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai." Okay, it says worship the most high for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so we are to worship the most high and the testimony of Yahweh Shai, who is the word, the only begotten son of the heavenly father and our Lord and Savior, right? So is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so you can't call yourself one of the hopeful elect if you aren't even going out and prophesying the, the, the things that are written therein. And what does prophecy mean? Okay, prophecy is a compound word. 
okay? Pro meaning to say and fasai, uh, uh meaning uh, uh, before, or roughly paraphrasing, meaning to say before, to speak before it happens. But we have the script, we have the playbook, okay? All we have to do is just follow follow the script, so to speak, okay? It's not that hard. Yet even here and, here and still, you have Israelites that are going off on even the most simple and basic of scriptures. Okay, that's why Yahweh Shai himself said that this was given to those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Meaning those mysteries are only given to a very small remnant. And it's that small remnant that is going to be delivered in these uh, last days to come from the coming destruction. Okay, now with that being said, let's jump back to... Uh, we're going to stay in Revelations, but we're going to jump to chapter 11. And the headline reads, The Two Witnesses. Okay, now this is speaking about uh, Moses and Elijah, but also, too, the two witnesses, okay, is also speaking about the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, okay? And we're going to begin at verse 3, and it says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Okay, now this is a revelation that's speaking about here in these end times. And it specifically says that we're going to be prophesying in sackcloth. Okay, now sackcloth, that's a, 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 a cloth of mourning. And why are we going to be prophesying in cloths of mourning? Okay, because we understand that we are yet this day in our captivity, as the book of Baruch and the Apocrypha tells us. Okay. Our spirits are crying out. We even ourselves on the highways and hedges and even in these video epistles are crying out to Yahweh Bashim Hashai to save us and to deliver us from this captivity. Okay, and the beautiful thing is here in Babylon the Great, this is the last captivity of the Israelites. So this is our last chance to quote unquote get it right. Of course, those who are going to be saved and those who are going to be uh, 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 left here to burn okay, or, or whatever judgment befalls them has already been predestined, okay, but the scriptures say you're going to know them by their fruits, okay, who's, who's standing stiffly for the name of the Lord, who's being obedient to the things written therein, and what the men of the hopeful elect would be doing in these end times, okay, in all holy conversation and godliness, all right, and uh, it's also too important to note clothed in sackcloth, meaning we're not out there to be seen of men wearing uh, fancy garments, okay? Now, there's nothing wrong with going out there with a nice garment, but that's not the point, okay? The point is we're, we're supposed to be petitioning ourselves and being penitent in the spirit, not going out there being flashy and being fly and trying to uh, promote worldly thoughts and agendas, okay? This is a very serious mission that we have been tasked to do, okay? Okay? Verse 4 it says, These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Most High of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. Okay, now this actually happened, okay, with Moses and Elijah that were granted that spiritual power to perform miracles. But that fire coming out of our mouth is also this word that we are speaking that's tearing down strongholds. Okay, the scriptures say that once this pure word, this pure doctrine goes across the whole earth, the whole globe and everyone that has been uh, tasked to hear this word hears it and either scoffs and turns from it okay or repents and turns back to the word okay then the end shall come and that's one of our main motivators of doing these lessons is the lord willing do do that lesson that's going to reach the hopeful elect so they can hear this word and be healed okay because we want this destruction to come we need it to come Okay, and someone in the world may hear that and think we're crazy, but when you understand prophecy, you know that the destruction has to come before our salvation. So that's why we are continuing to hasten the day. Okay, and even here in uh, 2024, which is the year of, uh, or the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, as coined by uh, the beloved apostle Tahar, okay, we, we're starting to see a lot of things in the spirit that are ramping up. Okay. Here it is, we're in the beginning of October and you got all these uh, major companies and corporations going on strike, union workers, right? For for, for uh, major uh, transportation companies. You got the dock workers on the ports going on strike. Okay, even uh, 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 me here personally and some of the brothers I work with, we work in the aerospace industry and we're in a contract season coming up next year, okay? So, you know, the, who, who knows how that's gonna go? 
Not to mention we're on the verge of election year, which is next month in November, if we even get that far. So there's a lot of things that are happening in the spirit. But all these things have been mentioned and talked about in the scriptures. So that's how we know we can navigate confidently what time we're in. Okay. Iran just uh, uh, just last night attacked uh, Israel with ballistic missiles. That's an act of war. Okay. So so we're here on the verge of, of, of all these prophecies being fulfilled. But that one major thing that's keeping us steady and steadfast and, 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 and uh, allowing us to, to, to move with faith and to be tempered in the spirit, we know that before the major prophecies come to pass, that the MOTB has to be made mandatory. So that's why we can, in a sense, may, uh, remain calm and collected because we know that that too has to come to pass, okay, before all hell really breaks loose, all right? Uh, verse 6, it says, These have the power to shut heaven that it not rain in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So these, this is the type of power that Moses and Elijah had. But this power is also going to be bestowed onto those that are prophesying this word in truth and sincerity. Those prophets of the northern and southern kingdom that are prophesying the destruction to come and the return of Yahweh Mashiach. There's going to be men on these street corners. There's going to be men that you see on YouTube that are going to receive such power. Okay? To exalt the names of Yahweh Mashiach in these last days. Okay? whether you believe it or not. Verse seven, and when they, that they being the Northern and Southern kingdom, okay, shall have finished their testimony, okay, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Okay, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay, and this is speaking about America. Okay, what land is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt? It's Babylon the Great. And this is not talking about where the Lord was physically crucified, but spiritually crucified, meaning X'd out. Okay, you got iconoclasm. You got them taking the, uh, uh, taking the Lord's name out of the school system. Okay, you got all the perversion that's going on in religion. Okay, so on and so forth. You even got Israelites that are waking up to who they are that aren't promoting the names of, of the Heavenly Father and Only Begotten Son because they have been joined onto a covenant with their enemies by way of a 501c3 statute. Okay. Continuing on, it says, verse 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Okay, that... uh uh, three days and a half is equal to 350 years, which equals from 1619 or 1620 to 1969 or 1970. That's that 350 years. Okay. And verse 10, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall sing gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Okay. And you can get um, uh, more context of that in Psalms 83rd chapter about all these nations that have a tumult against the Lord's people. Okay, these other nations, they are enemies to Israel. Okay, there's a confederacy against our people to keep us down, keep us stagnant, keep us stupefied. But the Lord has poured his spirit upon all flesh. Okay, and the important thing to note about that is the hopeful elect are waking up to the truth and who they really are in the spirit. Okay, and, and we are the ones that are turning the world right side up, as it were. Okay. Uh, verse 11. And after three days and a half, okay, that 350 years, which you just mentioned, the spirit of life of the Most High entered into them. That's that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, right? And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And this is the time that we're in now. This is the rise of all the Israelite camps. Okay. Of course, beginning with those that have the, the sure doctrine. Okay. But even those that aren't teaching 100% truth, just the fact that they're out there on the highways and hedges, waking up our people to who they really are, is a sign of prophecy. Okay. Remember, the scriptures say you can do nothing against the truth before the truth. 
All right, let's get a uh, First John five, beginning of verse nine. First John chapter five, beginning of verse nine. It says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of the Most High is greater. For this is the witness of the Most High, which he had testified of his son. Okay. So as, as I just mentioned to the spirit, as beautiful as it is, we got these other Israelite groups out there teaching our people who they are for the most part. Okay. Are they teaching the truth of Yahweh Shai about him being the Lord and Savior? Teaching the importance of the names, who we should be praying to and worshiping. Okay. And petitioning to right there's only one group that's out there doing that in truth and sincerity and that's great millstone and the the affiliate camps that teach the alike doctrine okay continuing on it says he that believeth on the son of the most high hath the witness in himself he that believeth not the most high hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that the most high gave of his son and this is the record that the most high hath given to us eternal life and that life is in his son so that's going to show you how important believing on Yahweh shy and his sacrifice is and yes we are to worship the heavenly father's son as well whom all power was given to okay verse 12 he hath made he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of the most high hath not life okay it's as simple as that okay because those that believe uh, uh on the sacrifice that Yahweh shy made okay are one of his those spirits that have been joined on to him that's why it's so easy for us to believe and trust in in yahweh shy and his sacrifice and what he did for our nation okay the scriptures are, are explaining it right here and lord willing us doing this work in truth and sincerity are counted amongst that hollow number okay that are that's going to be delivered in these last days all right let's get a uh, let's go back to revelation Revelation 12 and 17. Yeah, Revelation 12 and 17, which reads, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, that dragon being, you know, the revised Roman Empire, which is, you know, headed by Esau Edom, which you should know today as a so-called white man, and that woman being representative of uh, Israel, the nation of Israel. Okay. It says, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So only that small remnant is going to have the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And that is the elect. Okay, that's that number that we're hoping to be counted uh, to be a part of. Okay, and here in these last days, as prophecy continues to unfold, the hopeful elect are being sealed. Okay. Let's get uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. This is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, and it reads, Study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully divining the word of truth. Okay, and this is important because you can't just take what we say at face value. Study to show yourself approved. Get into these scriptures. Okay, put yourself there dedicate the time necessary to get this understanding okay so that you actually know what we're talking about when we bring these different prophecies out so that you could uh, confidently defend the word when someone comes and asks you about it okay uh, as apostle gabar says you know when you study something out search it out yourself and find the answer you appreciate it more when you come to that understanding and the lord's not going to lead you astray especially if you're coming uh, uh, in sincerity and seeking him 10 times more, he's going to reveal the answer to you. Because I remember personally growing up, I've always had a King James Bible, but I've never really understood it. Okay, until I came into this truth, and now it's as clear as day. Okay? And, and, and you know, you won't be ashamed when you come to, uh, 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 to the different exhortations and perseverances that come from reading this word and being studious, okay? This is our book, this is our history, okay? Take take pride in that, that the Lord woke you up to who you really are and where you come from, okay? Now, I wanna get Matthew the 24th chapter, which through the Spirit has been coming out a lot because Matthew the 24th chapter goes into Yahweh Shai telling about the future, okay? 
and I want to get uh, Matthew 24 and uh, verse 6 just to, uh, you know, get the point. And this is red letter. So these are the words of Yahweh Shai himself. It says, and he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Okay. You got China against Taiwan. You got Russia against Ukraine. You got Iran against Israel. Okay. All these things are taking place and happening right before your very eyes. And what are they doing to, to distract you? They're, they're, they're bringing out uh, 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 LeBron and his son, Bronny, being on the same team, the NBA. First father and son duo in the NBA on the same team. You got this whole distraction with the diddler, uh, P. Diddy, okay, and all his different allegations. All these different distractions put forth and brought to the masses to distract you from what's really going on in the spirit. And the prophets are the ones that are standing upon their watch, keeping you updated on what's really important. Okay? It says, See see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And that's why we're not troubled. As major as it is, these different countries and different regions getting bombed all across the world, there are certain things that have to take place first before all hell really breaks loose. Okay? And that's why the scriptures say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that time. Because we studied and, and we know these there's certain things that have to take place. Okay, verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Okay, the different food strikes going on because of the, the port closures on the east coast and the west coast. Right. It says uh, in pestilences. You got new variants of, of, of different diseases that, that are that are run, running rampant, putting people in the hospital. Okay? You got to be very PG because you get, get around these YouTube algorithms, but those with the spiritual ear to the ground know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? It's, it's like 2019, 2020 all over again. Okay? It says, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these different uh, record earthquakes taking place like never before. Okay, and I'm here in California. We get earthquakes here all the time. Okay. It says verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay, so as crazy as everything, uh, as, as things are, they're just going to get much worse because the scriptures detail it as a time like never before. Okay. Now with that being said, let's get the book of Obadiah. Uh, 1 and 2. Okay, and, and the whole book of Obadiah, you know, it, it's one chapter, 21 verses. It's all going into the destruction of Esau Edom. And that's important because as, as the Apocrypha details, and as we know through the Spirit, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So we are currently living in the end of Esau's rulership. And there's been no kingdom in history, okay, that gave up their, their seat of power peacefully. Okay, Esau is going to fight until the very bitter end. This is Obadiah 1 and 2. It says, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen that are greatly despised, going into Esau Edom, who the scriptures describe as the basis of men. You had the prime minister of Israel, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, go to give his, um, his speech at the United Nations General Assembly, and allied nations walked out on him. That's heavy. Okay? That's heavy. The, 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 all these allied nations are beginning to, to, to hate Israel and to hate Babylon. And eventually they're going to turn against them pursuing the prophecy. Okay. And that just goes to show that they're not all on one accord. They may be allied on paper. Okay. But in reality, they're not on one accord. And, and this was on live TV taking place. Okay. Uh, let's get Jeremiah 50 and 45. Jeremiah chapter 50, which uh, that, that whole chapter is a, is, a, is a prophecy against Babylon. Jeremiah 50 and 45, which reads, it says, Therefore ye sh ye sh therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord, Yahabashimashai, that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes, that he hath proposed against the land of the Chaldeans, okay, which is the, the modern day Chaldeans, the witches and warlocks of Esau Edom, is, are, are these uh, banking elites. Okay. It says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Because Israel's biggest ally is Babylon the Great. 
okay, in the least of the flock, okay, is, is, is these rats in Israel. They're going to draw out all these other nations and draw Babylon into their conflict, which is why President Biden just went on, on television, okay, for the first time. And I don't know how long, shit, we thought this motherfucker was dead. You know, he's been out of the scenes for so long, but he basically begged Benton, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu not to attack Iran, uh, the uh, Iranian military bases, okay? Because they know if something like that happens, they're going to be dragged into this roar. And if that happens, then Russia and their allies are going to respond and we're going to be in a full-fledged World War III, which technically we're already in. It just hasn't gone nuclear, okay? It says, surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them, Okay? And then this is going to happen. Both Babylon and Israel are going to be made desolate, pursuing the prophecy. Okay, and we're living in in in, uh, in those times now. Let's get uh, Revelations twelve and twelve. And it's because of this prophecy that this is going to take place. Revelation twelve and twelve it says, "Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell upon the earth." It says, "Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea." Woe meaning destruction. It says, "For the devil." Okay, uh, Esau eat him, okay, because devil just means deceiver. The devil's come down upon you having great wrath because he know that he had but a short a short time. Okay, so Esau knows that he's backed against the wall. And this is going to be his last stand. So he's going to come out guns blazing, literally. Okay. So these are the things that we're, uh, we're preparing, preparing you for through the spirit. Let's get Luke 21 and 15. Luke 21, verse 15. This is red letter. It says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom with all your adversaries shall not be able to gang say nor resist. Now, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. And remember, we read that uh, uh, the spirit of uh, the spirit of uh, Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So we could say for a surety that these are that these things are going to happen because one, they are written, and two, Yahweh Shai just told you he would give us a, a, a mouth that our enemies will not be able to gang say or resist. Why? Because we are speaking the words of the Heavenly Father. Okay? And these, these, these words are faithful and true, whether you believe it or not. Because these things will come to pass, and then you shall know at that time that there had been a prophet among you that warned you beforehand, whether you took heed or whether you didn't. Okay? So things are ramping up prophetically. And we are living in the times of great destruction, but also to great deliverance. So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect. I want to give all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. This has been your brother Manat Dezak. Until the next lesson, Shalom.